Hello folks, this is Troy with vtwins to v8s.com posting a video here of the, uh, the latest project that I have which is the down and out uh, Sportster also known as the Green Monster but uh, Green Monster has kind of gone away at this point and we've uh, stripped most of the paint off of it and any of you who have followed uh, the project on Facebook uh, the postings that I've done have seen some of the pictures so I'm just going to go through where I'm at here and what I'm what my uh, part of the project is today where I've been where I'm going that type of stuff this is an aluminum triple tree for the top and um, it used to have these big ugly bosses that came off of here and a big seam where they cast it to come across here and what I've done is I've removed that because we're gonna go with um, probably a handle mar handlebar mounted gauge setup or maybe no gauges at all if we really go old school um, so what I've done is I've I've cut this off and then I've sanded it and and polished it so we've got this nice contour so that when we paint it it'll be nice and smooth uh, this is a rough casting this is the bottom triple tree uh, we've drilled it for a steering stabilizer and drilled it for a Bates headlight because we're not using this bracket that we had over on here to support the headlight our headlights gonna be supported off the bottom of the triple tree so let me come over here to the frame and um, if you've seen any of the pictures, we took and cut it here and here and here, took this head right off, made this extension piece, kind of bent this like this, so you get this really long down and out kind of look. Um, Arlen Ness was uh, the pioneer of this. He kind of made it famous. You don't see a lot of these bikes anymore. This is going to be kind of our tribute to Arlen's work. And because we've done so many of the other choppers where the tank is really high and the, um, you know, the, 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 the neck comes up and, you know, it goes up and up and you've got like the, um, you know, like the, what I call the kind of like the Frisco style chopper. Uh, this is a different, um, point of view to it this is more of a dragster style thing it's down it's low it's lean and the front's really raked out it's got a really cool look to it um so anyways what i did was i made some plates to reinforce this we got this angle the way we want it to with the protractor uh my buddy bob over at new england choppers he tig welded this all together so it's nice and solid um and now i've taken and i've molded in all the areas um, where we've done some welding. This is a bracket for a steering stabilizer so that you don't get that flop with these way raked out choppers. It'll just kind of make it nice to handle. I've molded in all of these areas that you're actually going to be able to see. You got to remember the engines here, there's lots and lots of stuff on here that you're not going to see. So there was no sense in me spending, you know, hours sanding and filling and doing all kinds of finish work on stuff that you're never going to see. It's just the it's just reality you just don't have time to just screw around for nothing at all so we made this engine mount i blended all of this together so that when it is primed and painted this will all be all molded together same with this area down here i molded these off i got this these this area where the shocks are and stuff all molded in um my neck is all molded in nicely even the stop for the uh for the steering is done over here at the swing arm what i did was the swing arm is welded together here and here and then they take the top and the bottom and they weld it together and they put a weld in here. So what I've done is I've taken and molded it all together. So when this is painted, it'll all look like it's one piece. Uh, same with these shock brackets. I took and molded these in so once I get my primer on there and stuff, I didn't do the inside because the shock sits right here. and. If I molded that, I was afraid that my shock would come against it and probably break my filler or there really isn't enough room. I kind of set my shock up there and took a look at that and there wasn't a lot of room. Plus, um, you know, it, you're never going to see this because it's on the inside. Um, what I have here is I have a bicycle that I also raked and stretched. Uh, and I did this for my son many, many years ago. Uh, we never got around to painting it. He kind of grew up and moved on. And But I had this hanging around, and it's got the really long forks, and it's got kind of like the same look that this chopper has. So I came up with an idea that what I'm going to do is I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to paint this bicycle the same as the chopper. So when the project's complete, we've got uh, a bicycle chopper, 
and a sports to motorcycle chopper that match each other. And I thought that that would be kind of cool and I already have the pieces and everything so I figured that you know when it's all said and done I'm going to probably sell this bike and it'd be kind of cool if a guy bought the bike and um, his son was able to have the same bike that he has. So that's that's my general idea whether that'll actually happen or I'll you know hate the bike or love the bike or whatever Ooh, that remains to be seen. So I'm going to wrap up with this. I'm going to get some anti-corrosive primer on this on all the bare metal areas and then I'm going to put urethane primer on everything completely including the frame which was already done once I'm just going to freshen it up and sand it down again so I'm going to go ahead and do that and uh, I'll probably check in with you once it's all done you can take a look and see what it lo what it looks like and that will be this phase of the process so like I said you can see us on vtwins the vh.com and uh, follow our posts and videos right on Facebook or YouTube. Uh, thanks for tuning in.